Ariane 6 successfully launched today. Does it have a future? Yes, I argue that it does. It may not be the future that Europeans want. It may not be a future that competes directly with SpaceX. But yes, there are customers that are interested in Ariane 6. And I'm going to tell you who and how that might play out in the future. First off, congratulations to the Ariane 6 team. Congrats to Ariane Space, Ariane Group, ESA, the launch team at French Guiana. Congratulations to everyone on the successful launch today. It has been a long time coming. Ariane 6 has been been significantly delayed. This launch was supposed to happen four years ago, which I'm not terribly surprised about all launch vehicles. They are delayed and over budget. Um, four years, it's, it's a while. So congratulations to everyone who's been waiting for quite some time. Ariane 6 has been in development for almost 10 years now. To give you a little bit more terminology background, Ariane Group is the contractor that is made up of Airbus and Saffron. So they designed and built the Ariane 6 as a replacement for the Ariane 5. And then Ariane Space is the one who launches it. And it launches from French Guiana, which is a French run spaceport in collaboration with ESA. It was exciting to see it. It was fantastic views of Earth once it got up there. I mean, absolutely gorgeous launch. As far as I could see, everything happened very smoothly. And this has been a long time coming, not just because it was promised in 2020, but because the demand is so high right now. And that might surprise people who have been criticizing it over the years, thinking that it's not going to be competitive against other global launchers. And I've spoken to some journalists recently who very much want me to compare it to SpaceX. But instead, what it reminds me of is the space launch system. SLS is a government rocket built by prime contractors, but government focused rocket. And it has its purpose with its government missions and really no purpose outside of that, really no purpose outside of Artemis. It gives lip service to commercial customers, uh, but it is extremely expensive. It is rare, like there's just not that many of them being produced. The launch cadence is very low. The availability is very low. And so it is really a guaranteed rocket with its government customer, in this case, NASA, and, and that's about it. Now, Ariane 6 has a little bit more going for it than SLS. <laughs> they are both expensive big rockets. They are both not really profitable, although it remains to be seen whether or not Ariane 6 is going to be profitable. The Ariane 6, of course, is not a government vehicle per se. It is subsidized by the government and a lot of its customers are government, but it is commercially owned and operated and it does have commercial customers that I'm going to get into. The real purpose and the reason why it reminds me of SLS is that Ariane 6 is meant as a regional launcher, a sovereign launcher. It gives Europe its own launch vehicle. Just as when SLS was conceived, it was conceived as a replacement to the space shuttle so that the so that America can have its own launch vehicle. The government can have its own launch vehicle. It, it was a, a national project. And in this case, it's, it's a European project with Ariane 6. There's always going to be demand for a European customer to launch on a European rocket. I don't see that going away. And launch vehicles have gotten much more in demand recently. It might surprise people who have been following the space industry for as long as I have to remember back to a time when there were so many launch vehicles in development, people were continuously asking the question, who's going to use these launchers? There's not enough demand for all of these launchers. And now we've gotten to a point where there's so much demand and not enough launchers that really any launch vehicle that comes on board is going to be used, at least in the near term. We had the war in Ukraine where Russia got cut off from the Western world. And so that eliminated a lot of the la launch options that had been previously used. Uh, in fact, Russia removed its rockets from French Guiana. There was an incident with the Vega C which put that on pause for about two years. It's on track, hopefully, to launch by the end of this year, but you never know. Um, Vega E is still a, a long ways out. Europe hasn't had its own ride. It has been relying on others. And that's just never a comfortable position to be in. Is it strictly required that Europe have its own rocket? No. But I would say, you know, for go ask a European if they'd want one, and it does seem like they do. They, it seems like this is an important thing for them that they are willing to pay for it, that they are willing to spend tax dollars on. And Ariane 6 fits that, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily matter that Ariane 6 is not reusable, that it is expensive, that it may or may not be profitable. 
because that's not its intention. It's not its primary purpose. Its primary purpose is to be a European launcher, primarily for its European customers. But there are other customers, I'm gonna go through that. There are other customers that are using this aside from European. Because launch is so much in demand, there's so many things. There's been an increase, a significant increase in the amount of, of payloads needing to be launched. And there's just not enough supply of launchers to meet that demand. We see a significant backlog at this point. And Ariane 6 does have quite a bit of a manifest lined up. 30 payloads, 30 missions already booked up. That's pretty significant. That's not nothing. That's saying that Ariane 6 is in demand. And so whether it's in demand for this short period of time for just the next five, 10 years, I don't know, or whether it's in demand for a longer period of time, who's to say? But at this point in time, despite it being not the most modern rocket available, it has its reasons for existing. And I do want to get to the whole expendability versus reusability thing. I do want to get back to SpaceX. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But first, I do want to talk about the customers that it has lined up. There was a whole load of customers today on today's launch. I'm not going to go into them, but they were Europeans. And you can look through the manifest. I just have it open on Wikipedia right now. And it is, of course, a lot of European government clients and also some European companies, but you also have some surprises here. For example, Intelsat. Now, I don't actually know whether or not Intelsat considers itself an American company or a European company. It's headquartered both in Virginia and in Luxembourg, but that's a surprise to me. I forgot about that one. Skyloom, that's a small American startup based in Colorado. Optus, that's an Australian company. And of course, Amazon Project Kuiper, which is an American company. I will link to the video earlier that I did about Project Kuiper and just how many launches they need to do in a very short period of time. And so they manifested with a lot of different launch providers and they they booked up 18 Ariane 6 launches. So more than half of Ariane 6's launches right now are actually American. <laughs> which goes back to the question about competition with SpaceX. Do I think that Ariane 6 is competitive against Falcon 9? No, I do not. In fact, we saw just a couple of weeks ago, a European weather satellite get off of the manifest for Ariane 6 and get on the manifest for Falcon 9 because of timing, because of money. They didn't really say, they just said extreme circumstances, but whatever reason, Falcon 9 launches much more frequently and it is less expensive, significantly less expensive, and it's proven. Before today's launch, I made the comment that Ariane 6 is not yet proven. And even though this was a successful launch, you have a data point of one. And that's not to say that I think it's a risky rocket. I really don't think so. I think it's actually going to be a pretty stable, reliable rocket. However, it does not have the track record that a longer operational rocket has, such as a Falcon 9. Or maybe track record had nothing to do with it. Maybe it was simply available and launch price, which are two very important things. If you are a company wanting to launch something into space, that is going to be an asset to make money for your company. So no, Ariane 6 is not competitive against SpaceX. And that was a major criticism as the industry evolved over the past 10 years, Ariane 6 was proven to already be obsolete in a sense. There's a really um, interesting interview by Space News with Tony Toker Nielsen, who is the ESA Director of Space Transportation. And there were some contradictory statements here. For example, he talks first thing about the 30 manifested payloads on Ariane 6 already before it had even launched. And then a little bit later, he talks about how Ariane 6 does not need to be reusable. It's okay to be expendable because of the economics of low cadence launches. So. On the one hand, he's saying, look at all these launches we've already secured before it even launches. And I assume they're not going to turn people away. I'm assuming they're going to keep on signing new launches. But on the other hand, he's saying it's OK that it's expendable because we're not launching enough for it to be economical. And I find that to be, well, frankly, bullshit. I think that was mainly just an excuse to justify the fact that the design of Ariane 6 was obsolete as the space industry was changing and they weren't willing to change with the times or they weren't able to change with the times. They know that Ariane 6 is not cost competitive against a reusable rocket such as Falcon 9. I'm just gonna go read you this whole section here about comparing Ariane 6 and Starship because I think that this is some high delusion right here that will just be completely embarrassing in a few years. I'm going to read you some choice things that were said here. I honestly don't think Starship will be a game changer or a real competitor. 
This huge launcher is designed to fly people to the moon and Mars. Ariane 6 is the perfect job if you need to launch a four or five ton satellite. Starship will never eradicate Ariane 6 at all. In the far future, like 2040, the situation will be different. And it goes on. Um, I will link this in the description below. Some interesting things there. For one, Starship is not only going to be launching to the moon and Mars. Of course, the, I, the concept of Starship with its previous names and iterations is a humans to Mars transporter. But Starship has a lot of potential in Leo, Geo, Mio, all the orbits around Earth. And that is real competition against Ariane 6 and others. Another thing is that 2040 is not the far future. That is only 15 and a half years away. Uh, I've been in this industry over 20 years and I can tell you it goes fast. The industry has changed significantly over the past 15 years and I would expect it to change significantly again over the next 15 years. But to call 2040 the far future and to not plan for that, that is a mistake. But I actually think based on some other things he said here, for example, quote, but when we launch frequently in the future, we'll need reusability for economic reasons, end quote. So that tells me he's almost already thinking that Ariane 6 is going to need to be replaced with an Ariane 7 that is reusable. You know, some concept in the future that does make the Ariane system competitive and profitable against a reusable system. I really just truly think that it's justifications. It's them saying, we know that we don't have a rocket that is modern and comparative to what SpaceX is capable of doing, and not just SpaceX. There are other launch vehicles that are reusable or will be reusable in the future. So it's not just SpaceX here. The industry is changing so that reusable rocketry is going to become more and more of the norm and that expendable rockets like Ariane 6, like SLS, are going to be seen are already obsolete. But one thing he said that I do agree with in that statement I just read, Starship will not eradicate Ariane 6 at all is what he said. And I, I agree with that. I do not believe that Starship, for one thing, will be operational yet in, in the near future that competes with Ariane 6. So Starship in the near future is really focused on its NASA customer. It's got private customers already booked. It's got the DoD interested. And so Starship is already really busy with other things that are probably not going to directly compete with Ariane 6 in the near future. But if you look a decade out, maybe not even a decade out, yeah, it's it's going to compete. Based on the fact that there's always going to be European customers for Ariane rockets, I think that Ariane 6 is safe. But based on the fact that the industry is changing and the very statements that were made here that I just read to you, I do believe that Ariane 6 will need to be retired at some point in the not too far future, not, probably before 2040, and replaced with a reusable rocket because Starship will eventually possibly eradicate an Ariane rocket that is not expendable in the quote unquote far future. When that is, I don't know. Nobody can tell you. Nobody will really know when it is that Starship will eat everybody's lunch if it, if it ends up doing so at all. But I can tell you with certainty that there is going to be a customer base for Ariane 6 and any European rocket that exists to launch European customers. And the data is already showing that. So congratulations again to the Ariane 6 team. I wish this rocket much success in the future as it does have a lot of work to do.